sure you could. Great. I hope the battery holds up. I thought I turned that off after practice, but it was still on, unless somebody turned it on just now. Good morning, everyone. Let's all come in and, and take a seat. We're glad that you're here with us this morning. Uh, and uh, it looks like we are continuing to worship the Lord together. Our kids are coming in. Um, cool. We're going to have Sunday school today. Um, but thank you for wearing your masks. Thank you for sanitizing your hands. Thank you for getting your temperature taken. Uh, that is going to be probably the new normal here for a, a while. And we certainly would appreciate that we continue to work our best at staying six feet apart from each other. I noticed that uh, sometimes we're a little bit too close when we are fellowshipping and talking with each other. So let's, uh, let's work at that. But let's begin our service this morning uh, as uh, David Shipman uh, leads us in prayer, and then we will stand together for the call to worship. Uh, David, would you lead us in prayer? I'll be happy to. Heavenly Father, we love you. We are here to worship you. We're here to lift up the name of Jesus. Father, I want to lift up Tom right now, and I pray that you would take him in your hands, that you would guide him. You would speak through him powerfully, Lord. May your word just settle deep into our hearts and minds that we may go away from here uh, knowing and loving you even more. And Lord, again, we turn this time of worship over to you. We worship you in the preaching of your word and in singing of songs of praise to you. And we turn it over to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's all stand together for our call to worship taken from Hebrews 4.16, let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. David, please lead us in our first song, Grace Like Rain. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Blind, but now I see so clearly. Hallelujah, grace like rain falls down on me. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, all my saints are washed away. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. Like 
like rain falls down on me. Hallelujah, all my stains are washed away. They're washed away. Yes, they are. Thank you, Lord. When we been there ten thousand years, bright shining as the sun, we've no less days to sing God's praise. Amazing. Hallelujah. Grace like rain falls down on me. Hallelujah. All my stains are washed away. Hallelujah. Grace like rain falls down on me washes us clean hallelujah all my stains are washed away they're washed away they're washed away they're washed away they're washed away Amen. Let's continue in our worship this morning with the New City Catechism. And our question this morning is, number 41, how is the Word of God to be read and heard? So we're going to answer together with diligence, preparation, and prayer so that we may accept it with faith, store it in our hearts, and practice it in our lives. And that comes from 2 Timothy. All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. Let's continue in our worship now as David leads us in the wonderful cross. 1 Corinthians 1.18 for the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. When I survey the wondrous cross, on which the Prince of Glory died. My richest gain I count but loss, and poor content on all my pride. See, from his head, his hands, his feet, sorrow and love flow mingled down. Did as such love and sorrow me, all thorns compose so rich a crown over oh, the wonderful cross over oh, the wonderful cross bids me come and die and find where I may truly live over oh, the wonderful cross over oh, the wonderful cross all who 
come gather here by grace and strong we hear and bless your name. Romans 5, 7 through 9. For one will scarcely die for a, right, for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would dare even to die. But God shows his love for us that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. Since therefore we have now been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. Jesus Christ, I think upon your sacrifice, you became nothing, put out to death. Many times I've wondered at your gift of life, and I'm in that place once again. I'm in that place once again. Once again I look upon the cross where you die I'm humbled by your mercy and I'm broken inside Once again I thank you Once again I pour out my life Now you are exalted to the highest place King of the heavens, or one day I'll bow. But for now, I marvel at your saving grace. I'm full of praise once again. Yes, I am, Lord. I'm full of praise once again. And once again, I look upon the cross where you died. I'm humbled by your mercy and I'm broken inside. Once again I thank you, once again I pour out my life. Sing that again. Once again I look upon the cross where you died. I'm humbled by your mercy and I'm broken inside. Once again I thank you, once again I pour out my life. 
Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the cross, my friend. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the cross, my friend. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the cross, my friend. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the cross, my friend. Father, we do call you our friend. And we thank you, Lord, that you have called us your friend first. And Lord, we thank you for the cross, that each one of us can come to the cross of Jesus Christ and experience the forgiveness of our sins, that we can be reconciled to you. Lord, we love you and we thank you. And we want to bless you now, Lord, as we sing together 10,000 reasons. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. O oh my soul. Worship his holy name. Seem like never before, oh my soul, I worship your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul. Worship your holy name. You're rich in love and you're slow to anger. Thank you. Your name is great and your heart is kind. For all your goodness I will keep on singing. Ten thousand reasons for my heart to find. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul. Worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul. I'll worship Your holy name. And on that day when my strength is failing, the end draws near and my time has come, still my soul will sing your praise unending. Ten thousand years and then forevermore. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul. Worship His holy name. The holy name of Jesus. Sing like never before. Oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I'll worship your holy name. Worship your holy name. Worship your holy name. You may be seated. Seem like never before, 
O oh my soul. We had the opportunity for the last 20 minutes to sing together as God's people. Isn't that wonderful when God's people come together to sing? People sing about Jesus. They sing about the Lord. Uh, Stacy's going to play a video for us now, a real short video, about a minute and a half. And uh, the introduction of the video is your missionary, Ken Taylor. And then Ken is going to be with a choir singing to us. But they are singing, and many of them have yet to know in their souls what they're singing about. They, don't, they have never met Jesus. He says 80% of his choir is pre-Christian. And so as we see this, you need to understand what it is that you're looking at. You're looking at a Zoom choir that Ken is leading in Japan. Stacy. We want to encourage today, whatever challenges you're going through in life, there is joy, there is hope in Jesus Christ. That is why there will be glory after this. Come on, choir. Let's pray, and I'm, Jeff Lambin is going to come forward, and he's going to lead us in our pastoral prayer this morning. And we want you to be excited about what God is doing in Japan and what is on Jeff's heart as he prays for us. Would you join him in prayer this morning? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning that you have given to us. Lord, we thank you for every good gift that you give to us, knowing that every good thing comes down from the Father of lights, and in you there is no shifting shadow, there is no deceit, there is only uh, goodness and love and grace and mercy to us. Lord, we thank you for the uh, greatest gift that you could possibly give us, the gift of your Son. The writer of Hebrews says, Lord, that... Uh, since then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every way has been tempted as we are yet without sin. Lord, we thank you for the gift that he was in this world, the gift that he continues to be in this world. Lord, we pray for each one of those uh, members of that choir that you would uh, move in their hearts with your spirit to call them to saving faith in you. Lord, we pray for all those who, who know the truth, who, who know you, who know your son and yet don't fully know him. Lord, we see time and time again, especially in the Gospel of John, people who believed in Jesus, who believed in him, who believed the signs, who believed the wonders, and yet it wasn't enough. They quickly turned their back upon him. Lord, we have friends, we have family members, some of us maybe even sitting in this room. And Lord, I pray that you would work in, your, in their hearts in a way that only your spirit can do, in a way that only you are powerful enough to do, and that you would bring that miracle of salvation to them, knowing that we have a great high priest 
who sympathizes with our weaknesses, who knows what it's like to be human, who knows what it's like to be uh, spurned by men, who knows what it's like to be betrayed, who knows what it's like to be sick, who knows what it's like to be injured and hurt and tired and weak and hungry and thirsty. He was a man just like us, and he still is a man, yet glorified now. Lord, I pray that we would take comfort in that and that we would hold fast to our confession because of who Jesus is and that he would continue to be our firm and steady anchor. And Lord, as the passage continues, I pray that you would help us to draw near to the throne of grace with confidence, with boldness, without any fear, without any trembling, uh, and draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Lord, with the world that you have created that has gone so deep into its sin, into its own depravity, into uh, its own madness, Lord, we know that you are constant and that we might just draw near to your throne, uh, bring all prayer requests before you, bring all needs and, and desires before you, knowing that we will find mercy, we will find grace. There is nothing but grace and mercy at the throne of grace and help. Lord, I pray that we would honor you. Pray, Lord, that you would work in in Tom as he brings your word. Lord, we believe in the Holy Spirit and that he is more powerful than any one of us could ever be. No lips can argue people in the way that uh, your spirit can. I pray, Lord, that he would work mightily in our hearts this morning and that your word would be applied and that we would be forever changed because of what we hear this morning. Uh, from your word. It's in your precious, wonderful name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Jeff. Jim Sproul, where are you? Jim Sproul. Uh, There's Jim, right there. Come on up here, Jim. And uh, Jim, I think it's your job to dismiss the kids when you're ready for for Sunday school, right? Yeah, right, 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 right. Okay. I'm getting ahead of myself. I have a loud voice. I can carry Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Yeah, (laughs) go, Jim. Okay. Good morning. Uh, I wanted to check this out, read this, check this out that was in your program this morning. So if we could just quickly grab that, and we'll go over that very quickly. Not too quickly, just go over it enough. Uh, Under new church directory, which I have right here, my hot little hands. If you're already in in the... Directory and have no changes to your information. Oh, I'm sorry. Gotcha. I have to have some. This is for the people who are watching us online. Otherwise, they can't hear me. So I, I have a loud enough voice, but <laughs> we want to make sure. Okay, if you're already in the d- d- directory and have no changes to your information, please write a big OK next to it right here. If you're already in the directory but have no changes to your information, please make corrections to the right. Okay. If you're not already in the directory and would like to be, please write your information to the right and where your info should go. Please please print legibly. Because if your handwriting's like mine, you want to make sure you take your time and do it because mine's not the best. Okay. Men's breakfast, July, uh, Saturday, July 25th. So for all those men who would love, it's, I've been there the last couple, it's great. You really, you really, I encourage all of us men to go because we really have a great time. Men will be meeting at 8 a.m. We'll continue to study in the Ten Commandments. Very important, very important. It really is great. Uh, Sunday, July 26th, commitment to the church membership class. If you are considering making Silver Hills your church family, would you please attend this class? Please indicate on the blue card, which I have right here, that you will be attending. It will be right after service. Lunch will be served. And if I'm not mistaken, it's portisubs. Isn't it always portisubs? Something like that? Okay. Good lunch, though. Okay. So, and last but not least, on living giving, uh, Venmo, I use it myself. I, test, I can test, testify to it. It works great. Uh, follow what it says right here on your on your brochure is what to do and how it's done. It's instant, no check writing. And if you're like me, where you start getting tendinitis in your fingers, you won't. This won't happen. 
So it's really easy, really great, fun to do, and it's trustworthy. Not as trustworthy as our Lord, but it's trustworthy. Okay. Now, uh, the only thing left I have to do is to, uh, for all the boys and girls that are willing to go into the schooling over here, that Crystal Lambin is he heading up today. She's uh, got the door open for all those boys and girls who are ready to go in there and have some fun and learn about Jesus. So, thank you so much. Thank you, Jim. All the kids are anxious to go back there. The grandmas and the grandpas have brought their kids to today. We're glad for that. Let's take out our Bibles this morning and invite Tom Quick, if he would come forward. Tom is going to lead us in our study of God's Word this morning. And I would ask that you would give Tom uh, your closest and most detailed attention. Tom? Uh, good morning. Can you hear me okay? Good morning, good morning. Well, we're going to be continuing on in the book of First John today. Last week, Pastor Ben went through the, the word of life for us and talked about the flesh. The word became flesh. And today we're going to continue on, but it, our message today is going to be more about enemies. An enemy that we all deal with and an enemy that is in the world today, even insects have enemies of birds. Birds have enemies of cats and dogs. But the biggest enemy we have, besides automobiles that we might hit us or a virus that might get us, is the enemy of sin. So this enemy of sin, how do we deal with this today? And it's something that scares us. I know sin is something I'm really ashamed of. I'm so ashamed of it that I don't like to even talk about it. i rather hide it, keep it in the closet. Come to church on Sunday with my shirt all buttoned up and I'm all that. Because I'm ashamed of my sin. So this is something I think we need to address quite closely, is our sin. It's not a bad word. I mean, it's not part of God, but you're going to see in this passage today that there's a way to deal with it. And there's a way of being with God even though we have sin. And that's very important to do. So today, we like to read, I'd like you to open up your Bibles to 1 John, 1 John is the fourth book from the back of the Bible. You go to Revelations and you go to Jude, and then all of a sudden you're in the books of 1 John 1, 2, and 3. We're back into 1 John 1, and I'm going to ask uh, Steve Ogle, he would come up here and read us God's Word, and if you're willing and able, could you please stand for God's Word? Am I actually standing up here? Wait a minute. Oh, I'm okay. I'm okay. There's a lot to this. I just like to, uh, before reading, I, I need to pray. I don't open the word of God without praying. So, Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, you are glorious, Father. And I thank you for the privilege of your word, Lord. And I thank you so very much that you are allowing me to stand here in front of my brothers and sisters and read. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaimed to you, that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, the blood, blood of Jesus' his Son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. 
If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Steve. Please be seated. So as you may have noticed, I'm a little limpy today. Um, I have to confess I've I got in a little silly accident over the handlebars of my bicycle like a silly little kid for about a week or so. And I have to confess that uh, uh, my wife tried to tend to me well. And I finally uh, broke into her and went to the hospital last night and yada yada. But I don't want this to be a distraction. There's a reason why I'm limping around. I might be doing a little bit of dancing because uh, blood doesn't circulate and it's very painful. Um, but anyways, thank you, my beautiful wife, for tending to me as well as you have. Uh, today, as we enter into God's word, through the scripture, you can hear that it is very, very rich. Uh, there's not a whole lot of expanding I need to do on this passageway, but of course I will. Uh, in the very beginning here, uh, first of all, like with Steve, I like to pray. And I just want to say, Lord, uh, Father, help me, Lord, to just reveal your word. Lord, thank you for injuring me and humbling me and letting me know that I am weak and I need you, Lord, and that you may speak through me, Lord, and maybe my voice you hear, but Lord, it be your words that are spoken here today. Thank you, Lord. So John starts off by, in verse 1a, we're going to say, number one, it says there's a, there's a message for Jesus for you. Now, that's pretty obvious as we look in at number one, that the message is for you, but it says here, this is the message we have heard from him that we proclaim to you. So, the message that we have heard, that is the apostles, that they have heard this message, and the hymn is Jesus. So, the apostles heard Jesus give them a message, and then he wants to proclaim it to you and me. Now, this message that we hear is for, just like it says here, for if you have ears to hear. In other words, not all of us hear this message. Some of us may be here in church thinking about what's going on after church, not what we're doing here in church, because our lives are busy, and we get distracted, and we always have that next thing to do, and those do's to take control. So it isn't for everybody. It, but we have to have ears to hear that, and that's from Matthew 11. Also, we have to be able to hear Jesus' voice. And Jesus' voice, he said in John 10, 27, he said, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. So there's a hearing, and we need to hear what voice it is before we can listen to this very important message that is being delivered from Jesus today. So we ask God to speak to us today and to help, help us from not thinking and being distracted as we hear this message. Then number two, we go into God is light and no sin at all is in him. And we see that here, where God says, that is, God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. So John is making this very clear right off the bat, right in the beginning of his message here, he defines that one, God is light, and the other is, there is no darkness at all. There is no sin. And you're going to see the importance of that as we move forward here 
how this clarity needs to be there as we begin this message that we are proclaiming. Okay? So, God sent Jesus into the world. And we see that in John, verse 8, 12. John, verse 8, 12 says, Again, Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me, there's a very important part right here. Whoever follows me, so once again, this is what we said, not everybody will hear this message, or every, this message is for everybody. This message is for those who follow the light, or follow Jesus. And in, you will not walk in darkness, but you will have light of life. Okay, light of life is what has been brought into the world. The light has been brought to the world that gives us life or new birth. This is something that is given to us from the light if we follow the light. Okay? Hopefully this is helping to see what this light is. Then, in John 12, Jesus said, while you have the light, believe in the light, that you may become sons of the light. So after Jesus' light lights you up, I'm going to say, by the Holy Spirit, let him work in you. Let him bear fruit in you. You are gifted by this light, the Spirit, that you may become sons of Jesus. And Paul puts it another way in Ephesians 5 8. He says, For at one time you were in darkness, but now you are light and the, the Lord. Walk as children of light. That's the same as we can see here in Matthew 18, 13. Truly, I say to you, unless you turn and become like children, you will never, ever enter the kingdom of heaven. So, this is important that we enjoy the light. We enjoy this light as a child. Not as an adult, because what do we do as an adult? I know I do. As an adult, I want to control life. I'm in control. I am the adult here. Listen to me. I've got this all figured out. My wife can testify to that one. She always says, you know, take off those bossy pants of yours. Because I'm trying to control. But yet we're called to be like children in the light. Very important to enter the light like a child. Let God take control. So now let's look at John's opening in his gospel. John's opening in his gospel, he says in John 1, 1 through 5, he says, In the beginning was the word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And he was, in the beginning, with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Now, look close. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shined unto the darkness, and the darkness has overcome it. Jesus is the light in us. And the darkness cannot overcome. Yes, there is darkness in our life. We are going to be dealing with this darkness in our life. But 
triumphantly, we're going to overcome this darkness. Believe. Believe in God's word. This is God's word telling us that it will be overcome. Then, in number three, in your worship guide handouts, we can talk, we can walk in fellowship with Jesus. We can walk in fellowship with Jesus. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie. And we do not practice the truth. Now the first thing we want to look at in the scripture closely is how it starts. It says, if we say, now if we say is an action that comes out of our mouth. We say things. And then the other end of that is we do things. It's very important how it's stated here that if we say, think about our sins. Our sins come from our heart and come out through our tongue. This is something we've learned in James 3. In James 3, it talks in depth about how our tongue is like a rudder on a ship. It's a large ship, but we guide it. So our sin is going to be revealed through our mouth, our speaking. And this is where it's saying, if we say, there we go. There is some kind of problem there right off the bat, if we say. Now, if we say, if we do, or if we walk, or we do something we're now doing instead of just saying. Which, that opening of our mouth is what leads us to this sin. So what do we do? Don't talk? I wish I could do that, because every time I open my mouth, I've got to watch it. I've got to think and control this, and I've got to pray, and I just hope the Holy Spirit speaks out of me instead of my flesh. Because as soon as my flesh says something, Downhill from there. We can't have fellowship with him, Jesus, as it says here, because how can we have fellowship with Jesus, who is light? And in him, there's no darkness. Remember, we clarified that right in the beginning. That's how John started this passage way. There's no darkness at all. John makes this very clear for us in verse 5b. There is not nothing there at all in common in this relationship. How can we have fellowship when there's nothing in common? If there's no darkness in Jesus and we are walking in darkness, it's like me going over in Miss Carol's house who likes to sew and sitting down and have a cup of tea and doing some sewing. We have nothing in common there. There's not a very good relationship in that. But we have a much different relationship, which we'll talk about here soon. So, look back into your worship guides and look at number four. Four, can we walk in fellowship with the Spirit? We can walk in fellowship with the Spirit. Let me define what I'm saying here. But if we walk in the light, as he's walked in the light, we have fellowship with one another. Now I'm going to refer right back to what I was saying with Miss Carol, that, yeah, I don't sew or just sit down and have a cup of tea with her, but I really enjoy my fellowship with Miss Carol because of her spirit that's inside of her. We have many of times we've had great conversations talking about God. And yeah, I like to hear about her quilting abilities and all that because it's done in love what she does for others. She makes quilts for other people or she sells for other people. See, that what wasn't a relationship it becomes a very strong relationship with one another here in this church. 
So we have a special relationship as a church here together, and this relationship is because of our spirit that dwells in us. I think about, like, Jim and Hank. They like to fish. Well, I can tell you, my fishing is like untangling lines, and I got a hook stuck in my back leg. I don't want anything to do with fishing. <laughs> but yet, I love Hank, and I love Jim. We fish for men. We have a different type of fishing. Our fishing is through the spirit, and that's what brings us together. It's not the differences that we have. It's the common part that we have together in Christ. Fellowship can be defined as... We can define fellowship as an association, especially with people who share the same interest. See how that definition rings out the same interest? Do we have the same interest here? No, not in all things, but the part that we do have the same interest is where we come together. That's why we're all here, right? We're not here to go you know, horseback riding. We're, we're not here to go... Uh, uh, doom bugging or anything else or sewing. We're here because of God. This is our interest and this is our fellowship that we have together. This is the common cause that we share. And of course on the bottom, last week Pastor Ben covered the, the mutual participation in a common cause or shared life. Did you all remember that? That's a test from last week. Where Pastor Ben shared that with us, you can see that common cause or that share of life. I want to share my life with all of you in Christ. And I want you all to hold me up to that. That's what we should do here as a church. Lift one another. I'm looking over at Steve because we, we love talking about God. And many others here. And this is our common part that brings us together. Because we know that this is not easy at all for us to have this common relationship together, there's struggles and whatnot, but where do you think these struggles come from? Charles Spurgeon has a quote that helps us realize where these troubles come from. He says, Satan always hates Christian fellowship. It is the policy to keep Christians apart. Anything which can divide saints from one another, he divide, delights in. He attaches far more importance to godly intercourse than we do. Since union is strength, he does his best to promote separation. Let us be aware. Let us beware, as Pastor Jerry said in our teaching today, Satan sifts us. He wants us to be apart. Sometimes we don't think about Satan. We don't talk too much about him in church. We should. It's talked about many times in the Bible, and it, it could be separating our relationship here together, our fellowship together. We don't want that to happen here as a church. God so loves his church. I love the church. When I say I love the church, it's you. It's the spirit in you that I love. Now this fellowship is not just with one another. This is very important. Although I don't want to say our relationship together is not important, but it's not just with you and I, the believers. 
If we look at a couple verses earlier in this passage, in verse 3, 1 John 1, 3, that's from last week, John opens up his letter by saying, That which we have seen and heard, we proclaim also to you, so that you may have fellowship with us. That's us, together, the Spirit, together. And indeed, indeed, our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son, Christ. We have fellowship with one another, with the Father, and we have fellowship with Jesus. How can any of the three work without each other? They're the same. If we have fellowship as one another here in this church, like I said, it is a spirit fellowship that we have. If the spirit has that fellowship, Jesus has that fellowship. We have that same fellowship with Jesus. We have that same fellowship with the Father. There is no different in the Trinity at all. It's God. Right? And But we just label, label God in a different place. God the Father in heaven. Jesus, the Son of God, and the man, Jesus. The Spirit in you and I, that who believes. So you see, it's just a way of identifying God where he's at. There is a likeness between one and one who walks in the light, a likeness in this church body, a likeness that brings us together. Even though we are different people, we share the same Christ likeness. That's why we're called Christians. We are Christ like. Yes, praise God. I heard that. I like it. <laughs> Back to our worship guides. Number five. We need forgiveness and cleansing in for all of our sins. We see this here in verse 7b. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sins. Now John tells us in verse 5 that God is light. And in him there's no darkness, no sin, no cleansing needed. In him. But here we have a fellowship relationship that's not quite the same with us. We don't have that. We have darkness in us. We have sin in us. So it's important to see the difference here in this relationship. It's like we're in this mud puddle together. Here we are giggling our way, playing in the mud. But how do we get cleaned up out of this mud? Gary can't help me clean up. He's in the same muddle pud I'm in. He might be able to help me clean up a little bit out of this mud, but there it goes. We slip and fall in the mud puddle again. The mud puddle is there, and we need to be cleansed. We think about forgiveness is one aspect that God gives us about sin, he forgives us. But how much better is it to be cleansed of our sins? And I do something wrong, it's nice when my wife forgives me. But I know she doesn't forget. And I don't blame her. I want to be cleansed of that sin. I want that sin to be clean all out of me. I don't want to deal with that sin anymore. I don't want it just to be forgotten, although I praise God for forgiving me for sins. But it's the cleansing part that also brings forth more. And what I mean by that is, 
your kitchen counter, there's a stain on it. And you sit there and you clean it and you clean it and you finally get rid of that stain. And guess what it does? That spot looks cleaner than the rest. So you start realizing there's other parts that need to be cleaned also. It brings us to a richer part of cleansing of us, of our sins. How do we do this cleaning, this cleansing? How do we get this? As it says here, through the blood. The blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us of all sin. We read through this in scripture, we kind of just read by it. The blood is life. The life is in the blood. The blood is Jesus' life that he gave for us on that cross that cleans us of our sin. What we're hearing today is the gospel, people. We're hearing nothing but the good news of Christ here. And we need to hear the gospel, even though this message may be really familiar to you, or if you've heard this before, we need the gospel. We need the gospel preached to us continuously. I'm going to confess to that. I need it. I need Jesus continuously. I need his cleansing blood continuously. Not just once. I need it continuously. And we need this to be in fellowship with him. How do we get into heaven without being cleansed? By the blood of Jesus Christ. Number six in our worship guides. There is sin as we walk in the light. There is sin as we walk in the light. If we look at verse seven, but if we walk in the light, and now I'm going back just a little bit, just so we covered back. If we look at verse seven, it says, But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Now, if we're walking in the light, and we need cleansing, there must be sin there. Or we wouldn't need any cleansing that he's mentioned. So, walking in the light... There is cleansing. There is sin involved as we walk in the light. And all I can say is praise God for that because we don't have to be perfect to walk in the light. So John is relaying to us his message from Jesus that to walk in the light is for you and me, the sinners, all of us. Don't feel like you cannot walk with God. You just have to follow Jesus to be able to walk in this light, his light. So if we go to verse 8, it says, if we say... We have no sin. We deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. So once again, if we say, there's the word again, the speaking part, the not doing part. As you see in verse 7, it says, but if we walk. The walk is the action. We're walking in the light. We're, We're working. We're moving. We're doing something. See the contrast there between saying, if you say, is an avenue to sin. It's something that we have to be careful of every time we open our mouth. I do. 
So look at that contrast of walking, doing, and in this verse, once again, if we say we have no sin, we're just sinning right there. <laughs> we do not have to be perfect to walk in this light. Without this, there would be no relationship in the light. So, there's two points here I want to talk about of walking in the light. The first point here of walking in the light, we're going to see in 1 John 2, 8, and 10. So we're moving a little bit forward in John. Just a little bit forward in the book of John here. And it says, at the same time, it is a new commandment that I am writing to you, which is true in him and in you. Because the darkness has passed away and the true light is already shining. Now listen closely here. Whoever says he is in the light and hates his brother is still in darkness. Whoever loves his brother abides in the light and he will be there. In him there will be no cause for stumbling. So the first point of walking in the light is to love one another. You might want to make a little note on that one. There's two points here. Love one another. Walk in the light requires loving one another. It's pretty hard to have a, a fellowship with someone and hate them. Right? Our second point we can see here, we'll see in number seven, where it says here, walking in the light is loving one another and confessing. We see this in verse nine. If we can confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So there we have both the forgiveness and the cleansing in one verse. We need them both. We need a forgiveness and we need this cleansing. And how do we do this? We do it through confession of our sins. Now confession is an act of love. If you confess your sins to Jesus, you love him. You say, Jesus, I need you. I sin. I don't want to sin anymore, Jesus. Forgive me, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I don't know why I do what I do. But we're the ones in the mud puddle. We can't figure this out. We need to have Jesus take us out of this mud cleanses. I look at a man in this church, Jim, who came up front and confessed his sins to this whole church body. There's a man of God for you. Like I said, I'm ashamed of my sins. I try to hide them. I try to hide them because I'm so ashamed of them. But I want to confess to you, since I have this opportunity to sit in front of this church, that I mistreat my wife. I treat brothers and sisters of this church more better than I treat my own wife. It hurts me. I'm ashamed of it. And I ask you all to help me with this. Amen. Amen. Let's confess our to one another. We can confess. We can show love to one another. We can do this with Jesus. We can do this with the Father. We can do this with one another. The spirit of each other. 
Beginning in the light involves fellowship with God and one another, spirit that is. And we abide in our walk in this light by the life, love of God and with one another. But not perfect love, but the life of continuing confession of our sins. Walking in the light is the first in our transformation to be like God, who is the light and the love, and have a characteristic of this love to believers. And secondly, that we fail to love, when we do this, when we fail to love, that we can confess and take, we confess to one another, our selfishness just takes over, that we may confess. But because you are born again, that you see, you see, you falling back into the flesh, but if you are in the light, you will see the sin. If you're in this light, you will see it, you will recognize it. And you will hate it. And you will see you are broken. Because of this, we need this bright light. This bright light of Jesus. And you will confess all your wonders to God and give cleansing and the blessing of forgiveness. And we will be ongoing cleansing through the blood of Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we're so grateful. We're here in this mud puddle, Lord. We need you, Lord. That's what the first thing we want to start off with, Lord, is we need you. And Lord, we need all of you. And when I say, Lord, we need all of you, we need the Father. We need you, Jesus, the Son. And we need this fellowship church that we are in, these brothers and sisters that we are amongst. We need all of you because all of you have the Spirit in you, Lord. And what a blessing to have God with us in this body, in this church. Lord, help us to confess. Help us to be in the light. Lord, we want you. We want your light. Let your light shine bright upon us all. And we pray that your darkness stay without us. And Lord, as we ask the worship team to come forward, Lord, that this day be your day, Lord, and all days, Lord. Help us with our struggle in our, from our flesh. Give us your spirit and let it lead the way. Be the light on our path. This we pray for in Jesus' name. Let's all stand together as we sing together as it is in heaven. Uh, David's going to lead us in this song that he introduced some time ago. Uh, but uh, it's a familiar song because it is God's word. David, would you lead us? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Come and let your glory, come and let your glory fall. Our Father, who art in heaven, the rocks cry out your name. Come and let your glory, come and let your glory fall. We will sing, sing a new song. 
We will sing, sing a new song. We will sing, sing a new song to the Lord. Let your kingdom come, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Every heart proclaim the mercy of your name on earth as it is in heaven. God give us new every morning, mercy daily bread. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus we pray. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us with your hand. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Father, we pray. We will sing, sing a new song. We will sing, sing a new song. We will sing, sing a new song to the Lord. Let your kingdom come, let your will be done. On earth as it is in heaven, every heart proclaim the mercy of your name. On earth as it is in heaven, let your kingdom come, let your will be done. On earth as it is in heaven, every heart proclaim the mercy of your name. On earth as it is in heaven, for the kingdom is yours, and the power is yours, and the glory forever. Amen. For the kingdom is yours, and the power is yours, and the glory forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Father, for your word and the promise that each one of us can claim as we leave this house of worship that if we confess our sins, Father, you are faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Lord, we ask that you would help us to walk in the light that you would help us to walk with Jesus, that you would allow us, Father, to walk with him, to love him, to please him, and to reflect him in everything that we say and everything that we do. For it's in Christ's name we pray, and all God's people said, Amen. You may be dismissed, and please make certain that you social distance. <laughs>